everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Deck Collection 101 here on Our Bite You. Uh, doing a little bit different today. Uh, normally, I'm in the office, but we're all remote, seeing that you know we're going through this little pandemic. Uh, but we have a very special guest, um, someone who we've worked with before. Great to have you back. Rebecca Johnson with Numerical. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. So uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about blocking and labeling during this time. I think it's uh, extremely important now, maybe more so than ever. There's a lot of things that people might notice that are happening that are unexpected consequences of the whole situation. So let's get right into it. Um, how has this pandemic impact, impacted the rollout of the Trace Act uh, that was proposed or came out a little while ago, and if at all? You know, um, the way I'm going to answer that is in two parts with regards to the impact. Uh, I think now more than ever, the criticality of this act has been amplified. Um, and really what has shined a light on is the need for call authentication because we are having, which it's the most depressing part of this, is that in a time when everyone should be coming together, We've got fraudulent actors and we've got companies who are trying to take advantage of fear, uncertainty, and doubt within the citizens of this country. And we saw a ramp of COVID-19 type of scams. Yep. We really need to deploy call authentication. So number one, we would be able to identify who these entities are and shut them down. So I think there's more of an urgency and the need for this, uh, for basically the call authentication, which is the essence of Traceback to be implemented. Where I see a negative impact is coming from uh, the FCC's ability to implement and continue to move forward with what they need to do with regards to rulings. Um, around the call authentication. I haven't seen delays, but you know, we, we live in a new reality now and they're dispersed even within uh, that commission. Uh, they have a workload that is much greater than what they were anticipating. So I think from the industry perspective, um, we can do our part by providing thorough comments back to the FCC if they give shorter timelines in order to not slip behind on deployment of the Trace Act, I think we should honor that and do what we can uh, to support the deployment of it. But if if anything, I, it's I wish we already had this deployed. It would be different uh, with regards to how the calls are being treated, and perhaps we could protect consumers from these fraudulent uh, calls around COVID nineteen. Yeah, it's uh, great. You, it's crazy you saying that because the first I think two weeks ago, someone at Arbite got a call from somebody saying that they basically have a COVID nineteen test, and it was trying to get them to pay money. Um, it was a robocall, but it's so that's yeah, crazy. Yep, those are, and, and here's the issue is that that ends up flooding, um, you know, the the network with uh, a lot of fraudulent yeah. calls amidst uh, legit calls. So that's it's just creating yeah. another layer of messes. Yeah, are there any? Uh, I mean, are there any new measures that were put in place to prevent these types of robocalls to consumers during the pandemic or due to this? I definitely am seeing. Um, uh, comments and an urgency from uh, the Senate, at least from that side, from senators saying, hey, we should have had this in place, hurry up, move it along. Um, so there's nothing we can do any differently right now with regards to stopping. The one thing I have seen, though, is a much more collaboration from the analytics side coming together to basically say, hey, here's what we're seeing, and they share it with the other analytics, hey, here's what we're seeing. So it's, if anything, it's created a little bit of a cohesiveness in the analytics space, which I think has been needed for um, quite some time. So that's a positive that we're seeing. So with regards to new call blocking measures, there's nothing more than just we need to bring the teams together and work together. And I actually, uh, my background was in security as well. And when I was in healthcare um, security, that was one of the things that um, I was a part of helping develop is how do we have uh, a way for all of us to share our security attacks because whatever's attacking my system is going to attack your system. And so I think it's just a natural thing that we're getting into. It takes a situation like this for us to all realize data sharing is a positive thing that we should do uh, when we're trying to all equally combat the same bad guy. So that's that's a good thing that, um, that we're seeing. As far as um, protections, you know, there are protections. Um, I would say the increased awareness to protect consumers from fraudulent calls. But what's been really good is the FCC put out a declaratory ruling on Friday, just this past Friday, 
uh, to provide some guidance to healthcare providers, uh, state and government officials of what types of messages will constitute an emergency under the TCPA, which allows for the exemption around consent. What we don't want is uh, our hospital administrators who are managing communications, scratching their head, debating, can we send this communication? Do we have the proper consent? Um, that's why we have the emergency exemption in there. So they did declare this is the time for that, but they were very specific on the who, what, and when um, uh, types of calls and entities that qualify for that. So that's important because um, we're seeing some <laughs> interesting uh, notifications that, hey, I run a bicycle shop and I ride bikes to deliver food during this time. It's really important that my calls are viewed critical. No, I'm not going to get on board with that one. So it's, right. it's everybody's screen critical. Yeah, I was going to say like now we, we've been getting a, um, a lot of businesses that uh, industries that we don't necessarily service during this time trying to use our products because I don't know if there's ever been a time in this you know, in my lifetime, at least where so many businesses have had to reach so many of all of their consumers at once to tell them something. Um, and yeah, some people I think aren't necessarily critical, but like you have all these, I mean, like a mortgage company maybe is trying to tell everybody, hey, you don't have to make your mortgage payment. Um, and like your auto maybe trying to tell people not, you don't have to make your auto payment and stuff like that. Um, is there anything that businesses debt collection agencies in particular, or even other businesses do to ensure that their calls are not blocked during this time. Because, you know, I would, if, if my mortgage company decided, I'm going to, you know, say, great, we're postponing payments. Like, they, I would love to get that call. <laughs> so, I think a lot of people would love to get that call. <laughs> yeah. Followed by the uh, uh, notice of, here's your checks coming in from the stimulus package. Right. <laughs> to get that. Um, that's a very good question, and I want to touch on something um, that maybe not everybody's taking the time to consider. We have a disruption within this country in how business works. We have a disruption in how we communicate. Everybody has been dispersed to different locations. The communication patterns have changed. Calling traffic has changed. We see, um, you know, most people are using their cell phones or they're using um, online uh, conferencing tools. They've turned up new at-home agent services. So, and those agents may be in different places from where they originally used to be located, where the communications came from a certain spot. So it's just a lot of noise in the communication network. If there's anything I could tell your customers and your audience, now is absolutely the time that you need to register your numbers. Now, debt collection calls, and that was called out very specifically in the declaratory ruling, those are not going to get critical labeled to them. But you should still register so that you can remove the fraud label um, and we can do some monitoring on the spam. This is going to be a really good time to start some conversations again around what spam means. Uh, with the analytics providers and the carriers and the FCC, because to your point, Alex, you, I, I think it's a horrible thing to label the communication that says your mortgage is going to go on hold as a spam. There's going to be a lot of volume and traffic. That does not mean it's a spam. So we're going to have some different stories to tell, I think, definitely uh, to the FCC as they're trying to make some additional rulings around how we operate in this world that um, will be beneficial to the collection industry. And I think we may come out of this with a much better appreciation for this industry and the work that they do. I I'm hopeful for it. That's what <laughs> my perspective. Hopefully, hopefully yes. Um, so with that, like the analytics um, with call blocking in particular, like calls that are, you know, certain carriers are blocking calls and such. Um, they look at things like spikes in traffic, right? Yes. So I don't know if you know if they're rethinking some of that due to the situation at all, because, well, a lot of the, I mean, it's almost like a paradox, like I'm going to have a spike in traffic when I need to get those calls out the most, right? Um, so you're, but you would be blocking those calls. So it's just, I don't know, you can shed this, a light on that. 
Yeah, you're touching on where we have that need for call authentication, where we can associate the identity to the number and the terminating carrier, so AT&T, Total Verizon, that they can have a level of confidence that, okay, there was authorization of this entity to use this number. That's what the Trace Act is bringing in. Then you have the analytics on top of that that looks at the behavior of how that uh, those numbers are behaving on the network. We still need to have the conversations, and this is where you know your organization, your members can step up and, and help with the education side of those spikes that may happen. I believe we should get to a point that if you verified who you are, you identified yourself, you've attached that identity to your outbound calls, you should not be labeled uh, spam um, unless there is some huge threshold that needs to be met. Right now, when I look at the debt collection space, all I see is this industry gets labeled spam because there are some people that just don't like it. And I wish it was more sophisticated than that. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's what we're up against. Um, so, but again, I think there's a new narrative that can come out of this uh, pandemic. Yeah, uh, to sure. help the um, so I know there's an FCC meeting coming up. Um, I believe it's March 31st. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of what we can expect to come out of this? No, we can expect I won't be there in person, <laughs> <laughs> nor will any of them, I would assume. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be a virtual meeting uh, at that point. Um, really what we're, we're going to see is, uh, you know, they have their specific agenda, but I'm going to talk really about the, the robocall um, item on the agenda. And um, they've already put out the NPRM on that. I've been reading it. I really like what I'm seeing in it. I like what the FCC is considering and asking for feedback from the industry on. Um, if I had to give a perspective, it, I see their, their level of knowledge and understanding is going down to a deeper level, which is good. So the conversations can be more enlightening and we can help provide some guidance on the ruling, the final ruling that we will see out. So I don't expect the NPRM to change much, especially since we've had a lot of chaos during this time. And before the uh, the uh, FCC's meeting, there are opportunities to go into the FCC and give feedback on what they're currently proposing to the NPRM. Um, because everything's been distracted, I don't know that many people took the time <laughs> to, to <laughs> have conversations. Um, and I didn't see anything egregious in it that I would raise a big red flag to. So, um, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity to, to file some comments um, to give responses on how we can protect and deploy uh, uh, Stir Shaken based on what the Trace Act has told them to do. So it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, I was going to ask like if there was any chance of it being postponed or anything, but they're just going to do it virtually. I think they could just do it virtually. I haven't heard that it would be postponed. Uh, now, granted, it looks like when I say something, then like 30 <laughs> seconds later after we end this, uh, it's changed. But as far as I've seen, no. I don't see why we would need to. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Thanks so much. I mean, you covered a lot for everybody, so I really appreciate that. I just have one more question. Kind of, It's not on script here, but um, do you think that there's – what would you – I mean, looking at everything that's happened during this pandemic, businesses changing – doing things that they never would have considered doing. All these collection agencies have hundreds of collectors working from home right now. It's something that they never would have thought of before. Um, do you think there's going to be on any like unforeseen changes to industries that come out of this that are actually positive? Oh, I absolutely do. I've got all kinds of thoughts on that one. One, yeah. I think, um, uh, wow, I could do a whole podcast on that one, but I'm going to yeah. pick specific for perhaps this industry. I think the way that we engage um, on perhaps lending loans, um, working out debt is gonna have to, is gonna change because I'm trying to imagine what this world is with people defaulting on payments where there isn't relief. What does this look like? How do we work with consumers coming out of this? Do the rules change a little bit based on this pandemic? I think the collection industry is really going to see a change. Um, I don't know what it's going to be, but um, the way we went into this is not the way that we're coming out of it. And I think the way we interact and maybe the IP we will get involved as well too. That is going to take a whole new form. I, I just, I just 
that's my gut telling me and that's one thing i'm going to be watching personally uh and for the industry as well yeah yeah I would, that's a good point i would agree i think that that's something that'll change i think a lot of different things might change and hopefully for the better in some aspects but um so yeah thanks so much rebecca i appreciate it uh, if anyone watching has any questions specifically about call blocking labeling the trace act feel free to comment below um you can share those questions with rebecca hope get some answers for you um but until next time stay safe stay healthy and thanks so much for watching